Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an algebraic expression. We're given that x plus y plus z is equal to 0, and we're supposed to evaluate x squared minus yz divided by x squared plus y squared plus z squared. All right, so I'll be presenting two methods, even though we can also talk about a third method. And let's start with the first one. For the first method, I'm going to start off with x plus y plus z equals 0, because that's what we're given. And then I'm going to go ahead and isolate y plus z. The reason why I go with y plus z is I do have a yz in the numerator. So if I, I can obviously isolate any of these variables, like I can isolate x, y, or z, put the x, y together, or so on and so forth. But it makes sense if you put the y and z together, so we can get something that looks like yz. So after isolating y plus z, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract x from both sides. In other words, I'm going to get y plus z equals negative x. And then I'll square both sides. If you square both sides, you're going to get the following. On the left hand side, we get y squared plus z squared plus 2yz. This is why, why I wanted to square that or do it that way. And then on the right-hand side, you're squaring negative x, so that's going to become positive x squared. Now, at this point, it's obviously very critical to get what we're looking for. I would like to get x squared plus y squared plus z squared on the right-hand side. So I'm going to add y squared plus z squared to both sides. Let me go ahead and show that real quick. So I have this, and then I have that. And to both sides, I'm going to go ahead and add y squared plus z squared. And that's going to give me x squared plus y squared plus z squared on the right hand side. Great. So we kind of got an expression for x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Let's go ahead and simplify a little bit on the left hand side. So we can write this as x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 2y squared plus 2z squared plus 2yz. This is something that I'd like to use later, so let's go ahead and save it and take a look at our expression one more time. Now remember, we're working off of this, so I'm going to re rewrite it. y squared plus z squared plus 2yz. It, it's after squaring both sides, of course. I don't need to do it again. Now at this point, uh, I want to get what is in the numerator, x squared plus yz. I, I, don't, I have x squared on the right hand side, but I don't have minus yz. So it makes sense if you subtract yz from both sides. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and subtract yz from both sides. And that way I'm going to be getting x squared minus yz, which is good. x squared minus yz. And that is going to equal the following, y squared plus z squared, 2yz minus yz. They're like terms, so we're going to simplify them and write it as yz. So it's good because I was able to get an expression for x squared minus yz. I was able to get an expression for x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Those are my numerators and denominators, so I'm going to put it together now. So we were trying to evaluate the following expression x squared plus y squared plus z squared divided by x squared minus yz. This is what I'm trying to evaluate numerically. And then I'm going to replace x squared plus y squared plus z squared with 2y squared plus 2z squared plus 2yz. And then the bottom, I'm just going to replace it with y squared plus z squared plus yz. And guess what's going to happen from here? I can take out a 2 here in the numerator, 2 times the quantity y squared plus z squared plus yz. And that gives me what's at the bottom, which is very nice, because now I can go ahead and simplify this, and the numerical value happens to be 2 in this case. So I was trying to evaluate x squared plus y squared plus z squared divided by x squared minus yz, and it is just equal to 2. Great, so that is the numerical value I was looking for, and that brings us to the end of the first method and the beginning of second method. 
So here's the second method. And then if I remember, I'll talk about the third one briefly, because that's something that pretty much you can do on your own. And there's a lot of variation. So anyways, let me not give it away yet. So I have x plus y plus z equals zero. So I want to use a different method here. So instead of isolating one of the variables, why not just square both sides? That can be done, right? Obviously. So let's square both sides. And that gives us zero squared, which is zero. So on the left hand side, I'm getting x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 2xy plus 2xz plus 2yz. And on the right hand side, I get zero. Okay, cool. So what's so special about it? I can isolate this one because that's part of my expression. Remember, that is my numerator. So if I isolate x squared plus y squared plus z squared, then I get this expression with the negative 2 on the outside. So I can kind of write it as negative 2 times the quantity xy plus xz plus yz. Everything is negated because we're subtracting them. Make sense? Okay, so that's going to be one of my expressions that I'll be using later on. Let's go ahead and take a look at it one more time, this time for the bottom, for the denominator. Okay, how can I get to x squared minus yz? And that's not very straightforward. I kind of worked this problem out, and then I kind of had to reverse engineer it, kind of work backwards to get that idea. So it may not always be clear. We don't just come out of the, you know, it just doesn't come out of the blue. Sometimes you have to make an effort and you have to try different things and certain things don't always work. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by x and you'll see in a little bit why I'm doing it. When I multiply both sides by x, I'm going to get x squared plus xy plus xz. Could I multiply by y or z? Absolutely. It doesn't matter, but I just uh, chose to multiply by x this time. So after getting this expression, here's the tricky part. I want to isolate x squared. And you're going to see again in a little bit why I'm doing it. So x squared can be written as negative xy minus xz. And now I want to get to x squared minus yz from here. Notice that my denominator needs to be x squared minus yz. So why not subtract yz from both sides? So here's what we get. I have the following. Let's see. Minus. OK, now I have this equality. What am I missing on the right hand side? Take a look. I'm missing yz with a negative sign. right? So it makes sense if I subtract yz. And actually, that's what I exactly need to do because my denominator is x squared minus yz. OK, so that makes sense x squared minus yz becomes this expression. So I can go ahead and take out a negative one or just put a negative sign outside. It doesn't really matter. No big deal. We don't have to write the one. And this is what we get from x squared minus yz. Now, remember, we, we got this for sum of squares. We got this for x squared minus yz. Let's go ahead and put it together. All right. So our expression was x squared plus y squared plus z squared divided by x squared minus yz. I'm supposed to replace x squared plus y squared plus z squared with negative 2 times xy plus xz plus yz. And the bottom one I'm supposed to replace with negative 1 times the same thing, which tells us that the answer is 2. Great. So just like the first method, we get a 2. Of course, it should be the same thing. Our expression has a constant value under these conditions. And the answer is going to be 2. The third method, let's briefly talk about it. Since we're given x plus y plus z is equal to 0, you could basically just replace x, y, z with certain values. One of the things that you should be very careful about is not to use 0, 0, and 0 uh, for x, y, z values because that's going to make our expression indeterminate. Like you're going to get 0 over 0. That's actually how we can guarantee that uh, x plus y plus z equals 0 can be multiplied by x because we know that x does not equal 0. Anyways, that's no big deal, but that brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.